The Coming of Life, the Second Great Montessori Cultural Lesson. Do you remember that we said that a very, very long time ago, there was absolutely nothing at all, just immense chaos and darkness. And then into this measureless void of cold and darkness, a vast fiery cloud, which included all the stars came into being. The whole universe was in that cloud and amongst the little drops that fell from it was our own sun. Then the stars spread out so that now they are millions of miles apart and it takes light years to travel across the universe so that we can see stars in our sky. And we said that there are just so many millions of stars out there in our universe and our sun is our special star that the earth goes around. As our earth formed, its surface hardened like the scum on milk and the earth began to cool. Later, the volcano stopped and the sun shined happily on the earth. After a while, a problem began. You see, it rained and rained and rained and the water washed the rocks into the seas and the rocks were worn away and they started to poison the seas. At first, the rocks blamed the water for soaking them and moving them and wearing them away. But the water explained that it was just following the laws it had been given, saying, the rocks heat me up and I rise up and disappear into the air. When the cold air cools me, I fall down again. When I see a hollow or a crevice in the rocks, I go into it. When the air blows me, I have to move. It's not my fault the rocks are being worn away. It's the air's fault. I'm just following the laws that I've been given. When the air heard this, it replied, I cover the earth in blankets all around its big tummy in the middle and its cold head and feet. Water likes to jump on my back and I take it for a ride. When I come to the rocks, I have to climb over them and the mountains are very high. I get tired and I can't carry all the water, so I have to put it down. When the rocks are hot, it's even worse. It makes me so very tired. It's not my fault. I'm just doing my job, following the laws. And the rock said, we are just doing our job, following our law to stay together in one place. And I'm always being heated up by the sun and worn away by the rain. It's not my fault that I'm breaking down and poisoning the sea. And you see, the sun heating up the rocks is just doing its job. And the water, air, and rocks are just doing their job too. So it was no one's fault, but the sea was becoming poisoned. So what could the solution be? Well, the earth began an experiment and made little blobs of jelly. So little, you could hardly see them, but they could move. They could sense things and they could feel things. They began to work very hard at cleaning all of the poisonous water. The Great Spirit gave them rules too. Eat, grow, and make more of themselves. And they obeyed these rules happily. The blobs of jelly had only one cell and had to do all of the work. They got tired and decided that they should join together to do different tasks and make the work more efficient. Some blobs found the water itchy and made shells from the salt to cover them like little jackets. This made them heavy and they fell to the bottom of the water in layers and layers. Life continued to change and try new things. Some plants wanted to live on land and made food out of the gases in the air and from the sunshine. In water, two other important experiments happened. 
some fish decided they wanted to see what it would be like not to have a shell, but to have a rod inside their body. Coral began to clean the water of poisons while making beautiful islands and reefs on the bottom of the sea. The coral stayed still and couldn't chase food, so the fish that swam past it would waft food in their direction. Some creatures decided to try living on the land now that there were some plants for them to eat. The fishes had been breathing with gills. To breathe outside of the water, the creatures decided to make a sack inside their body. They had limbs instead of fins, so they could move about easily on the land. They were called amphibians. They still needed to live near water because they needed to keep their skin moist and they laid their eggs in the water. There was the first voice when the frog croaked. Before then, the only sounds were those made by the air, water, and rocks. The whoosh of the sea, the wind through the trees, and the crash of the thunder. The land changed. Mountains were pushed up, and some of the creatures were cut off from the ocean. So they had to learn to live on the land. They were the reptiles. They needed to make new skin, which could be dry. They put the young into hard eggs with shells. They were very successful and grew to enormous sizes. But remember, people didn't exist when the dinosaurs did. But lots of smaller creatures did, and they moved out of the way so that they would be comfortable and safe. They moved to colder areas and they got hot blood so that they would have energy even when it wasn't sunny and fur to keep them warm. Some flew and they were birds. They looked after their eggs and kept them warm by sitting on them for a long time even when they felt hungry. Other animals learned to keep their babies inside them and to feed them with their very own milk. And because they took such good care of their young, these creatures were very successful and became large and spread all over the earth, even walking over the ice to make their new homes. We call them mammals. Then it was the turn of a very special creature, one who had no fur coat, no sharp teeth, and not even any claws, but had three important gifts, a larger brain to think and imagine, an upright posture so they could use hands and make things and a heart to love even people they hadn't yet met. That special creature were humans, men, women, and children just like us.